Hey, all right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's little workshop, starting your own business with no manis. Um, this is going to be a uh, two-parter. So uh, this is going to be the first section we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to have like a declaration of success. We're going to be coming up with some business ideas. We're going to watch a short video um, about solving a problem uh, to start a business. Then we're going to be talking about building your MVP, then testing your MVP, using some of our tools and resources, and um, a, another short video about how to uh, market your small business on social media. So let's just jump right into it. So the first thing uh, is the declaration of success. So this is something that when you're thinking about your business, when you're thinking about, um, you know, I can't do this or it might be too hard or um, all of those things that come up when you're when you're thinking about business this is your declaration to yourself to say this is I got this and it goes I love myself I will take my business seriously and do all the research reading and networking needed to, to be successful and that's all it really takes to have a successful business you just need to do the research do the reading <clears throat> and do the networking and you'll be successful let me go forward. So first thing, we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Um, does anybody in here um, have like an idea for a business that they want to start? Or have they already started a business? What's, what's up, Javon? Yeah, um, I have a couple of business ideas that I want to kick off. Um, I'm actually in the process of trying to start my own um, t-shirt line. So trying to get that off the ground and use that um, to drive my content creation. And then from there, um, my own production company. I love that. I yeah. have like, my, my workshop today is like suited perfectly for your business. Like the exact thing that you want to do. Like I have all the tools right here. Um, okay, so anybody else? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, like I said, this as a reflex. Um, I already started mines. Um, as you know, it's called Self Love Organics. And pretty much I am teaching people how to love themselves authentically. Um, I'm creating a self love curriculum, as well as I have a party called Self Love Parties, where it's more about self awareness as far as the way you speak, the way you um, walk, the way your energy is, the way you think. And I also create affirmation cards. Mm. Um, I have not sold or put them out to sell yet because right now it's really expensive for printing mm. uh, those type of cards. And I really don't wanna go all the way out to China mm -hmm. to get them in it, but I may have to. But I also want to eventually open up a retreat, oh, a self-love retreat that is not only focused on the adults, but it's also focused on the kids. So I'm not only taking care of the parents, but I'm taking care of the children as well. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else? No? OK. Well. <clears throat> The first thing you want to know, you want to ask yourself is why do you want to start this business? Um, most of the time people start businesses um, because they want to solve a problem. Either, either it's a problem that they have, a problem that their friend has, a problem that their, you know, someone in their family had. Um, that's how we, that's how most uh, businesses do really well is because they're solving some sort of issue. Um, so that, that's our first step is we try to figure out what type of problem do we want to solve. <clears throat> so um, what, what does that, you know, um, look like? If you are starting a business from scratch with no money, um, you're probably already pretty creative, you know, pretty clever. Um, <clears throat> so use that creativity as a strength, use that in your research to find what best suits your needs and your budget. Um, 
basically you need to know what exactly your idea is and how much you're going to need to start things up. And I'm reading from my thing, if y'all can't tell. Um, so if you can't think of it, it's probably already out there. And if it's not, make it and sell it. And that's that's how most good businesses are, you know, start. It's something that um, that was really needed that someone else wasn't doing or they weren't doing it properly. Um, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Or they weren't they weren't doing it as well as they could have or you know so many so many other things so the next step is what's essential to your business so um it's easy to come up with a whole list of obstacles standing in the way of you <clears throat> launching your business it's often harder to come up with a list of opportunities that are right in front of you so if the thought of starting a business with no money scares you stop and reflect on what you can do right what you can do without right now. So that means, <clears throat> do you need um, this slick custom designed website um, when you've only when you only have three items to you know to to put on your website? Um, can you just do with creating a Facebook page and that just promotes your business locally instead? Or would it make more sense for you to post your products for sale on a site like Etsy? Um, would it make sense for you to design your own marketing, you know, marketing stuff on Canva instead of trying to pay somebody for, uh, you know, your, your, your marketing and your design? A lot of this stuff you can learn on your own. All you have to do is do the research and the, the reading. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what types of uh, resources do you need to figure these things out? <clears throat> and that's, this is your, another big question that you have to figure out. <clears throat> there's a lot of free resources on the web uh, i mean to say that there's that's an understatement um so all you need to do is make a list of what you need for your business and then research the free alternatives on the web for example if you're looking if um uh, for our business right we needed a product uh project management system and we were paying for um a service and that was going out of you know it was taking money out of our budget and so we started looking for free alternatives to, you know, just to be able to put our ideas together and plan out, you know, and now we don't have to pay for, you know, a project management system. Um, and we can keep everything, you know, in line. Um, so it's just things like that. You want to try to find uh, search for what you would normally search for, but just type free in front of that and see what you find. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what, let me see what else. So another pro tip is, um, you can use a lot of like these subscriptions, like download subscriptions, and then you know, as you know, you can uh, get a get a, a free subscription and then cut it off. Um, so I've got some resources here that I'm going to share with y'all in the chat. <coughs> Give me one second. Um, while we talk about these things. Oh, wait. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the first link here, um, Indie Hackers. <clears throat> Indie Hackers is uh, basically where a lots of successful business founders um, are interviewed every week. They, um, it's a great place to find inspiration. It's a great place to like just you can type in like um, you know t-shirt business, and you'll probably find someone. Who has started a t-shirt business and they you know have interviewed them and know exactly they'll, they'll tell you exactly what you need to know um another one is like udacity and coursera you can use those for free uh free business classes you know doing uh, we even did one for our for our business as board members we took a whole like uh nonprofit course on there <clears throat> totally for free so i definitely recommend using those things um, another one that I have um, <clears throat> is this, uh, Lord, uh, sorry, <laughs> um, um, is uh, this spreadsheet. And so I'm going to show you all this video and then we'll work, we'll work through the spreadsheet to sort of like work through our ideas. So give me one second while I pull up the spreadsheet. I had this coffee, Lord. Can I see my screen? The uh, video, the YouTube video. Okay. Yes. 
want to make sure that I talk about this because so many people when they're creating a business it's about me 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 it's about my website my social media my branding my logo my money my whatever when really it should be about other people Hey everybody, this is Shantavia from Shantavia.com and you're in the right place if you want to be inspired to build the brand and business you were made for. If you want to be successful in business, there's really only one thing you need to focus on and that is solving people's problems. This is the one thing you have to do to create a successful business because it is hard out here. We are living in probably one of the most stressful time periods that many of us have ever lived through between COVID-19 and the pandemic and anti-racist protests and politics and the upcoming election, at least in the United States. People are stressed. Hell, I'm stressed. This is a stressful time. And this is stressful before you even get to all the ins and outs of like your career and your home life and work and everything else, especially for people who have been following social distancing guidelines and have been stuck in the house. Maybe they have kids and maybe they don't have childcare. They don't know what they're going to do about schooling. People need help. And if you need help, imagine how many people around you need help. We all need help. And if you can create a business that helps people, that solves their problem, that literally, truly solves their problem, you are going to do the one thing you absolutely have to do. We can be really self-centered how great we are. We talk about how grateful and blessed we are that we were in a particular news article or on a website or that somebody bought our product or whatever. We talk about ourselves a lot. And I'm not saying you shouldn't talk about yourself, but you have to solve people's problems and get out of talking about how great you are and move to how you can actually help somebody else solve their problem. If you've ever seen The Temptations, you know that iconic scene where David Ruffin says, see you, Otis. Nobody's bigger than the group. I'm the one side of the place. They come to see me. They come in to see The Temptations. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. You and that is Ain't nobody coming to see you just because you're great. They're coming to you because they need help. They need a solution to their problem. I saw this tweet a few years ago, and it resonated with me so much. I talk about this tweet a lot, and it is tr the truth. People don't want your product. They don't want your software. They don't want your service. They want to lose weight. They want to spend more time with their families. They want to be motivated to uh, lose I don't know, lose that spouse that they need to get rid of. They want to start their business. They want their kids to be well-rounded. They want their kids to understand music or language or whatever. They want a solution to a problem that they have, or they want a way to solve the issue that they're dealing with. And so when you're marketing materials and your social media and all the things you're creating, if you aren't talking to people about how you're solving their problem, you're doing a disservice to those people, but you're also doing a disservice to yourself and to your business. People will follow you, people will support you, people will buy from you if you are solving their problem. And so I, I, I want to make sure that I talk about this because so many people when they're creating a business, it's about me, me, me. It's about my website, my social media, my branding, my logo, my money, my whatever. When really it should be about other people. I believe in servant leadership. I believe I believe we were all put on this earth to be of service to other people. And I believe that this is the one thing if you are going to be an effective business owner, you have to do. You have to not only be able to solve somebody's problem, but you have to be able to communicate to that, communicate that to people over and over and over again. So your social media, your marketing, all the things you're talking about online should be a lot less about you and a lot more about the problems that you're solving for other people. Now, if you like this video, make sure you drop a comment and let me know what problem you are solving for other people. And also make sure that you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every day. They're just quick tips to help you create the brand and business you were made for. Thanks so much for watching.
All right, loveallofthat.com. So what'd y'all think of that? I liked it. It got my gears going. I didn't get to say my business idea earlier because I was kind of tied up, but um, it did kind of make me think on my feet of what problem I'm solving. Because especially because I want to do, my goal is to create a satellite form of a modeling agency and then eventually moving into just multiple forms of media production but um it'll start there so the whole idea of not making it about you which is it's very easily especially in the field that um of modeling and stuff to me oh it's about me i'm pretty i can take pictures or whatever but it's just, how do i fulfill the need so that got me thinking but i know the need that i'm trying to fulfill um i want to connect photographers to models and then also connect those two to businesses all over that need the services and so it'll just be you know so it got me thinking on that route so i think it's i thought it was nice oh, thank you for sharing that um so would it, anybody else would would y'all think of the video how do you think it applies to uh your business Hey everybody. Well, uh, you know, I start businesses off of a shoestring budget or a roach kind of thing. And uh the video was very helpful, especially when doing business with others because it's all not all about you. And also with the need of some so sometimes you gotta think of not the need, but where you can fit in, especially with me doing entertainment, like doing puppetry and doing the stuff for art. I feel the um, need, basically not feel the need, but feeling the space of where the need is not there. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, what about you, uh, Angel? Sorry, he, 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 he just, right now. yeah, the, the whole puppet just yeah. threw me off. Um, really, it just, it was reinforcing what I already know. So, um, pretty much, it's just me knowing that, okay, I need to keep doing what I'm doing. Everything that she was saying, okay, that's what I'm doing. I need to keep doing it. Exactly. 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 Um, so, let's, uh, I'm going to show you guys this little uh, worksheet or spreadsheet that uh, <clears throat> basically it helps you. There it is. Um, it helps you uh, kind of put your ideas um, into a block for, uh, can y'all see this? Can y'all see the spreadsheet? Yeah, okay. So um, basically it starts like this. So you'll put like your idea. So for example, if it was a t-shirt business. Oh, well. It is only view only right now. I will do that in a second. But anyways, um, so you would put like t-shirt business and then you would put, you know, whatever details. Maybe you could think of like a domain name that it would have. Maybe you could think of like how many team members you would need for that kind of project. Um, your MVP hours, this would be how long it would take you to put together an MVP. Um, the investment would be how much, how much money you think it would cost or how much money you think you would need uh, from an investor. Um, and then the price is essentially like what the, if it's a product, like for example, a t-shirt, how much are you charging for the t-shirt? Um, how much would that, uh, the revenue per month, how much would you, you know, expect to get per month, you know, those kinds of things. And it's just so that you can outline your different ideas so that you, so that you can see, okay, well, this one, you know, it would be, I, I would have a lot of people, you know, um, that need to be on the team. And it was gonna take a lot of hours and a lot of investment. And you know what I mean? It's gonna take a lot of time and expenses. You know what I mean? Or, um, you know, the basically it's just a way of outlining your ideas. That's it. Y'all got it. All right, let's move on. So, um, give me a second. These things be. So yeah, feel free to use that if you, if you need to. So, 
Uh, what is an MVP? Does anybody know what an MVP is? I do not. This is a new term. Okay. Uh, MVP is a minimum viable product. Um, so basically what that is, it is the, um, let, let me read the, let me read this. It says, uh, MVP is a product on a basic level that is valuable and works. You can always add more features and spend time perfecting it, but get it out the door if it's good. Your product may not need all the add-ons. The main purpose of an MVP is to get feedback <clears throat> about what people really want. So it's not like you're putting out a product yet. You're getting, you're getting feedback and that's what you're doing. You're building, um, you're building your business around the feedback that you're getting. And that is what determines what problem you're solving, right? Because those people who's giving you feedback, they're telling you how you can solve their problems. <clears throat> um, so it will help you decide uh, what, whether there's real interest in that product, what features need to be built, um, what do your customers struggle with the most? Um, <clears throat> the key component of an MVP is getting traffic to your product to understand if the pure version is liked and to adjust for the features that are not liked. Without that, you cannot continue in the process of developing a business. So why, uh, why, build, a biz why build an MVP? It has a low risk with a high ROI. ROI means return on investment. So that means for the amount of time and energy that you would put in to the business or put into making this MVP, um, you, you would get a lot more for your time. That, that's what, what means return on investments. Um, it's often low risk. So uh, it's something like you only need an email address, a website and uh, a social media account and all those things can be deleted, you know, overnight. <clears throat> it's nothing, you know what I mean? If it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know what I mean? And you have to know, okay, this doesn't work. This is not working. Uh, and, but just from that also, just from creating that website, that social media, that email address, it could also be exponential and could be, you know, you could end up having so many emails and so many messages that you don't know what to do with them. And so it, you have to keep your focus on what's really important. Um, so it also saves you time and money, the time and money you would have otherwise spent on product development, uh, marketing can be saved and reinvested into your, your customer development, um, into your customer service, thanking, thanking the people who are participating, thanking the people who are paying, you know, who are spending their money or who are interested or, you know what I mean? The people. Yeah. So you want to focus your, your energy on your customers um, and making sure that they feel valued and that they feel a part of whatever you're doing. Um, and it also gives you the, um, the option to adopt customers early. These people that you're building um, from, from, these, uh, from this MVP, right? From this mailing list that you would be starting or you know, whatever, that, whatever that would be, those are gonna be your, your ride or dies, right? Because those are gonna be the first people who have like seen you, they saw your, your first Instagram post, you know what I mean? They, they instantly tapped in and now, now you have this like rolling, you know what I mean? And so those are going to be your first, those are going to be the first people to buy. And so you have to catch those people early and see what they want, see what they like and see what they're interested in. So how do you build an MVP? First off, you want to identify the product. If you already know your product, that's great. <clears throat> so you want to figure out what it is you're trying to offer, what, you know, what you want to sell, um, what, you know, what problem you're solving. Then you want to create a prototype. You want to have, for example, a uh, Brent for your thing. Um, I would just, I would message people, <clears throat> create a, create an Instagram. Like I said, uh, build a website, get a, 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 a email address, create an Instagram, and then literally just post pictures of models and, you know, and then just have like text or captions or whatever, or do, you know, reels. 
and say, hey, you know, looking for models, looking, you know, trying to start something, you know, it doesn't even have to be a real thing that you have in your mind yet. It's just something you're branching out and you're trying to see who's interested. And then they'll go to the website. They'll go to the, you know, they'll sign up for the mailing list just to see what it's about. You know, and now you've started to build a thing around what you're trying to do. And it's just that simple. It's just that simple. Um, for, um, for Angel, you know, for your cards, you don't actually have to have the cards yet. You don't actually have the, actually have to have the money to pay for the cards yet. There's so many things like Kickstarters. There's a, um, there was a black queer tarot place um, that they, they were raising money to start a tarot brand. Um, and they, they raised money through Kickstarter. They raised, I think $5,000. And they had people who were already prepared to buy that stuff before they had even had anything ready, before they had even printed anything or, you know, and so that's that's how you have to think. You have to uh, imagine that people will love what you have before they even know what you have, before they even see it. You know, they will love just the idea of it or what it what it brings to them. And so, um, yeah, so you could create, you know, uh, if you already have the graphics for those cards, right, you can share those things, share, share some of those graphics with people and let them know, like, hey, um, I've got, you know, I've got this going on. I'm building a mailing list. Um, give me some feedback. What types of, uh, you know, build a Google form where you can get feedback from the people who are already in either in your mailing list or whatever. Um, I, I see you got something to say. Let me go ahead. Okay. You, uh, sorry, I had to run out real quick. Uh, my mother needed something. But um, I heard you was talking about the Kickstarter. Now, I use, um, shit, what is the name of that? It's not Kickstarter. It's um, the other one. GoFundMe? GoFundMe? GoFundMe, that one. Um, I actually have a GoFundMe page. Mm -hmm. How can I spread the word more about the GoFundMe page? I've gone on my personal social media page, um, but it's not been so successful on my personal social media page. Um, so should I post it on my business social media page or should I try something else? Cause it's been about a month now that I started this GoFundMe. And the only reason why I didn't GoFundMe is because I know with Kickstarter, if you don't make the amount of money that you need, Mm -hmm. You're not going to see it. You're not going to see any of that money compared to GoFundMe. Right. Uh, I see what you're saying. So um, if there's a couple of different uh, aspects here. So when, you, it, when you're marketing your GoFundMe, right, um, how are you marketing? Are you just simply asking people to donate or are you making, it, making um, a case that people have to donate or they or this product or this thing that they need in their lives is is they're not going to see it you know what i mean you have to put put it in that type of way it's all in your marketing you know the way that you're they're showing it to people and the way that you're putting out get some other people involved and that's what you really need to do is try to get you know people who can even do uh social media stuff on your behalf and just talk about the project and talk about you know what you're trying to do and that will help, you know what I mean? Just, um, there's so many ways that you can do do that, but it's all in the way that you sell it. Um, so the, the GoFundMe, I wouldn't, I usually wouldn't suggest GoFundMe for a business thing. I usually suggest GoFundMe for like a charity thing, or if it's like, if it is like a really personal thing. Um, Kickstarter, you know I, know, I totally understand what you're saying about the money. The only thing about Kickstarter is, you would allow people to actually purchase the product before you have it. So you would be able to build sales in that way. That way you already know what your sales is looking like before you even, you know, go out the door. But since you already started the GoFundMe, um, you know, there's, there's potential for both, you know? Um, I would say, just look at your marketing, really look at the way that you're marketing. Sometimes you don't even need to say GoFundMe or say donation or say, uh, say any of those words. 
you can, you know, um, yeah, then this is where com being creative comes into play, you know. Um, so you, you'll figure it out, though. Thank you. You're so welcome. Um, so uh, anybody, anybody got anything they wanted to say? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. So, Angel, so uh, as a creative person like myself, I use multiple things. So I never use a GoFundMe just because my mentor, he raised $8,000 eight days. And I was seeing how to do that. So with like your project being tarot cards, you can start with a small price of like $500 and find a company that does like stuff for like 100 whatever and start to say, hey, I have a project that you can support uh collaborate with me, help or I ain't gonna use the word help me, but more so collaborate, more so help build and people will go in like every day. I do like okay, so let me see my bill face. So so like today um I had to uh go and I was going out and basically doing for black and gay I was going out and I was doing workshops for children and then one of my friends came across one of my videos and like hey could we buy yeah and I was telling them about black and gay and they said we will support you quizzy because it's you but we would look they were looking into it it was like I don't want I won't be anonymous and what we're going to give and like today they got six dollars said we want to get six dollars to six people to want to be do subscriptions. I was like, okay, thank you. But today when I was really telling them, I got creative with them. I said, well, and since you don't want to go do a subscription your own self, how about you collaborate and support us? Sure, we'll do that. So I'm in the negotiation talk again. I'm trying to get for them at least the what we market at $2,000. I can't get $2,000 from them. I told them, my minimum from y'all to be talking and what I can do for them is $5,000. And this is all for them to see in the page. They never seen, like they never um, went into the Discord, everything. All they seen was the web page and me talking about black and gay. So it's all like he like said, all about marketing. It's all how you say and also get your friends to market you. If they believe in your project and they believe what you're doing, get your friends to say, hey, you know, Angel got cards and I love these cards and blah, 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 blah. I do them with the puppets. I do them with everything I do because I'm a freelance artist. So I do a lot. And when freelance, I get recreative on how I present as marketing, how I say my words, and then how I market it to the people. Like if I were to market it, like these puppets to, this is say Mike or Adrian, I know them are in the vernacular of upper class. So I have to use, how you guys doing? Do you like a puppet? Would you like to have see something soft and I would get them with laughter. <laughs> That's how I would get them with laughter. So, you know, you got to market your people like, and people just don't understand like when I started doing my puppetry, mm -hmm. I thought everybody said, oh, it's a little kid thing. You can't even get a bitch with adults. I have a dog that will have a session with a puppy and tell me about their feelings and I'm just doing this all day and making them laugh. So I know the gift of laughing to get to adults. For a little child, I know that I have to go with the hi boys and go, how are you doing? And do something funny. That's the doing that. So it's the way how you market and the way how you do things. And also Indiegogo is a better thing in Kickstarter because they give you a time. And I have did an Indiegogo before and I did it like uh I did a Kickstarter, we did a Kickstarter Indiegogo and we did that for two hundred dollars and we seen how fast it went and then also if you know about Kickstarter, you know you can always restart after you get like the $200 mark or whatever mark you can get. So make sure that you get a smaller mark. And that's all I got to say. So hey, everybody. That's all I want to say. I know I talk forever, but just keep dropping the jewels. Thank you, Quincy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That puppet is, like I, thank you, because your, your puppet is, is, is yeah. <laughs> um, so... Uh, so yeah, Indiegogo, that's another good, um, that's another good uh, resource. I would definitely look into that as well. It all depends. You got to figure out what sort of will work for your business type. You know, I definitely think for tarot cards and, and stuff like that, I've seen, um, I, I only say mentioned Kickstarter because I know of a company um, who started their, their tarot cards from Kickstarter. Um, and yeah, I mean, they, they raised a lot of money. Um, Are you enough? I'm 
Go ahead. I was asking if Androgyny was an artist. Um, no. <laughs> I am not. Um, okay. But the, I... the 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 GoFundMe is not it's not for um the affirmation cards because the affirmation cards that's gonna for one just for one of the decks it's going to cost me probably about three four thousand dollars for five hundred of them that's that's not even including shipping um, what i wait was, wait 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 for 500 decks for 500 decks do you need it's going to it's going to cost me about three thousand dollars that's that's a lot that's a lot yeah. of that like can you imagine and, and it's more ex and that's just in china if i go base if i do us base it's going to be more and that's not including that's not even including the like the the, the box for it yeah. so for, the U, uh, for the us it's now it's including order? the box if i go to china right so is 500 the minimum order 500 is the minimum order wow so um here's another question so if you have to sell you also have to think of like you know your shipping you know all these people like they're gonna ship they're gonna ship all these things to your house and then when people purchase them you're gonna have to ship them out as well so that's like your time and your energy and money as well so this is why building your mvp is so 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 important building those people who you know want to buy the deck before you even and those money who are going to put money into it before you even have you know what i mean so mm -hmm. that, that's what we're saying like um go ahead yeah i'll just say this as far as the piggyback off what he's saying essentially he's saying find your audience right because there's a market for what you want to do you got to find them right so like for me um i i um i collect like figurines right and so it's like high quality figurines and they can run up upward to like two hundred dollars right so most of these figurines are um, pre-ordered right so they're not released they get all of uh, the interested buyers to, to pretty much fund the project and then once all of that has they reached their limit um then they'll go ahead and release the the product and so that's a model that you probably can do too just um find people that are interested in the deck get them to fund it like if you need a hundred people to like invest ten dollars i don't know i'm just making a fake numbers like get those people to do that investment and then you know move they from there did, you know and then they already bought it right yeah and so now you've got your money you know what i mean and you've got the decks and you know what i mean and now you've built also your brand and all these people now have your decks and they're like excited and you've built a whole buzz around it and what you can do, like create groups, right? You can create like a Facebook group for like, you know, say, hey guys, I'm creating this deck for, you know, whatever you want to say, right? Create it, get the group and say, hey, if you join this group, can you guys pledge the purchase in it? You know, you know, you know, whatever, however you want to do it. You, I, it can be done. A positive affirmations group on Facebook would, oh my God. And all you would have to do is post positive affirmations all day. What? That would be so easy. Oh, you know, but it's a lot. <laughs> It's a lot easier than what you think. It's, it's true. a lot easier saying than what you think. It's true. It is true. It is true. I it really is. It is. But I mean, you, um, could, you, know, you could do it essentially. But um, yeah, that, that will be great for the for my affirmation bags. Um, but the the goal for me is to help me get the supplies that I need for my self love part. Okay, okay, okay. Um with my self-love parties, I there's gonna be different the, there's gonna be different activities. So prime example is walking the runway. Okay. And these that's are that's gonna show people these are locally that's gonna show people. Go ahead. The, are these are local events or virtual? I'm sorry, I just want to get context. These are going to be local events. I am still trying to figure out a way how to do all of this. Okay. <clears throat> virtually um but for local events it's going to be you know like rocking the runway that's showing you hey how you know pay attention to how you walk is your head down is your head up is your shoulders down uh, another activity is writing a self-love letter to yourself mm. another 
activity is going to be a birthing ceremony. Um, so I have different, different activities for the party that is all about self-awareness. Uh, so and, so, so for, uh, for, uh, for clarity, um, you said uh, you are looking um, for funding for your party um, business. That, that's what yeah. it is, not the deck. Not the deck. Okay, so with that in mind, um, as far as if you're gonna go like with the Kickstarter and go fund me route, um, it's gonna be all in your story. Like you have to sell that story, make me believe it. Like wh what you're doing, like it transformed your life, right? So tell your story, like why is it so important to you? Like this is important because it did this, that, 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 that whatever for me. And I wanna share it with you guys. Like wh whatever that is for you, I think that's like, that's how it's going to connect with people. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's my opinion. Because um, uh, like I say, it's up, it's running. Um, I actually had a couple of people go ahead and read it before, before I posted it out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for the people that read it, it was like, yeah, this is good. Um, but the issue, like I said, the issue that I'm having is getting people to donate. I can post it on my personal page and the people that are on my personal page, those are not the people that need to see it. Those are the people, those people are not even going to um, support to the point where they're sharing it with other people. Not even I, just, not even, only, not even, but they're not even sharing it on their page. Can I ask you a question? What are you, like, what's your marketing strategy? Because why are you the person that I need to go to for these services? Like, what are you saying to show that you are the person that I need to go to in order to fulfill these things? Like, how do you address yeah. that? <laughs> that is by me telling my story. And what is that? Oh, gosh. I'm gonna give you the short version of it because it's too long. Um, let's just but, say in 2017, I was arrested, charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, facing 20 years felony time. Um, from there, my charges got dropped down to a class A misdemeanor, assault with bodily harm. That was really the catalyst that propelled me to do my self love journey. To to actually go within myself and start healing the bullshit that I've been holding on to. Um, dealing with, you know, family trauma, dealing with personal trauma, that was the catalyst. That was that moment where I was like, okay, something has to change. So, so I, I have and a that's just the short version. I okay. A couple of things. Uh, I know there's a lot to unpack. Um, I just want, I also want to say, um, no, you know what, Javon, go ahead, go ahead. I'm not go ahead. No, I was only, cause like, I've been doing these workshops for like the past three or four weeks or whatever for multiple people. And there is, there's a formula in order to get your success out there. So I actually, what your story was because that is gonna help you get those people through the door. Once you have your story, what is the system that you want people to buy into? Like, what was your self-help journey? Like, that is what you're trying to sell to these people. And so you told us about the activities that would take place once we're with you, but do you have that system in place? Like, what is your program? not telling you to tell me because that's essentially what you want people to buy into. It's essentially the way that I've seen the way that everybody is like formatting their situation is like, I'm going to get you to X, Y, and Z spot in your life. I'm going to solve this issue for you. And I'm going to show you how to do that in eight simple steps but follow me and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And that is how you're gonna get those people to share your information. 
And that is how you're going to get people to be like, yo, this dude really knows what the fuck he's talking about. And like, it's good to have these things like clear early on. So that way you're not just in the spot of nobody sharing my link. Because when it comes to business or whatever, people are not going to share your link solely off the personal connection. Like, why should they? And it's something that I feel like as a business owner or as any entrepreneur, period, like that's something that you have to keep in mind. So, yeah. Thank, thank you for that, Javon. Yeah, and um, I'll just add on to that. Um, when, it, when we're talking like local as well, you have to remember you need local people too to get involved. And that's, that is where your marketing is going to come, especially with a thing like GoFundMe. You need to get out there and pound the pavement and go and talk to people and just make the phone calls. You know what I mean? That's how you connect to people. That's how I, you know, my, my journey here um, in Oregon, um, I'll, you know, give you a little backstory about Black and Gay. I had started Black and Gay in New Orleans and it, it blew up literally within like two months. We had 16,000 followers just from one event. And then um, it was like, okay, we need to we need to do something with this. And I knew in my heart that I wanted to start like an eco village thing. Like I wanted to create, you know, have a land where we could all kind of go and just play and be free. And so, uh, you know, knowing having that in my heart, I was like, okay, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make I'm I'm gonna call the mayor. So I literally like we started looking for places. And um, we just so happened to stumble upon like a piece of land through Zillow. We were just looking at pieces of land on Zillow and we were like, oh, this is beautiful. And so uh, we called the mayor of the town and was just like, hey, we're trying to do this. We're trying to bring this to your city. You know, what do you think about that? <clears throat> and she was like, uh, what was funny when I called her, it must have been like 7 a.m. And, I, you know, the way that I am when I'm in these modes, I'm like pacing and I'm like breathing hard. And I called it, I was like, um, what's your stance on black LGBT issues? That was literally the first thing I said when she answered the phone. And she was like, huh? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, uh, my name is Michael and I'm you know, doing this thing. I started this business and blah, blah, blah. I wanna do this. And she was like, I love it. I was like, I love everything that you're doing. Um, you know, Let me connect you with this person and this person and this person. And literally from there, it was just like this snowball effect of like, you know, me getting connected with this and blah, blah, blah. and before I knew it, it was like so many people trying to help that I didn't know what to do. And um, and so that's how you have to think, like just reach out to people, you know what I mean? And just say, hey, like, you know, um, and think outside of the box when you're thinking about who to reach out to, because uh, you never know who, you know. Um, but I definitely say like, reach out locally. We're trying to do an event here. Um, and, you know, we're trying to get a lot of things like donated. And so I literally went, walked up to businesses and was just like, hey, um, we're trying to put this event together. Would you mind, you know, donating? We got our website, you know, we, we did this or whatever and show that to them, especially something like what you've got a GoFundMe. Like GoFundMe has a thing that you can print out and it has like these little strips on it, just like a, um, a what you call it page. And you can go and post that in places, you know, and um, and go and take that around to people and go and say, hey, like, you know, show your face, show your, tell your story, you know, and that, that is how you do it. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Brent, what you got? Yeah, I just, I just, I just got a quick little, quick little thing. Um, I suggest in doing, when you're reaching out locally and looking at these places, think about truly the community you want to serve who you're trying to help and think what resources are they utilizing? Let me talk to the owners or the those that are running, who's running that. So for example, if you're looking for at-risk LGBTQ plus youth, you know, you might wanna look at shelters or things, places like that, or, you know, um, like mental health facilities that are helping them out and kind of see you know, what do you know? What have you seen? And can you help me bridge this? Because they might have a, a space for you to host your event for free. There's a lot of that that can be for free for your event. 
Exactly. It's just talk to people. And then like, cause I've learned working at a school, like, like next week I'm putting on an event where I'm teaching the kids dental hygiene. Like I got a dentist that's like, I donate floss. I donate this. I donate that. All you got to do is have my business card sitting there. So, you know, it's like things like that. You just find out when you go around and you call and you ask. So. Okay. Javon got something and then Quincy, Quincy raises his hand too. Where are you based out of? I am based out of Houston, but actually within the next, the reason why I was asking all these questions is because of within the, probably the next couple months, probably by the first, within the first quarter of the new year, I'll be in San Diego. Okay. So um, it's more right now I'm getting everything, all my ducks in a row. Okay. So then when I get to San Diego, okay, I, I can just go. Period. I was going to say, um, reach out to queer youth organizations, um, black youth organizations. Um, for that, and uh, exactly what Brent just mentioned right there. Um, it would be good for you to get inside the existing network to get your name on people's minds and people's lips. And that way you're getting at the target audience that you're going for. Also, um, don't be afraid to go to where the people are, period. Um, if you know where the people be, go to where the people be. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Quincy, what you got? And also, how to put my hand down. Uh, uh oh. And someone can put my hand down there. I'm going to. So, also, in monetization, you know that testimony is a part of monetization. I do testimony all the time. So, like, you have the small business, and it's not even like up and running like that. You should do a small group where you can record and they can give a, a testimony, like, hey, I went to a week or three days with you, and this is how I went from being unhappy to happy, and they can tell their story. And you put this on your business page that people attract that, like, oh, oh, well. He did this, and uh, and, my, and that's a testimony. It's real money, and it's still people to attract it. Like what I do, and I'm quiet about myself when I do do so. But when people say, "Oh, well, have you ever heard this board name QK or QK Bay or even my name Quincy Q, Quincy Q Keith?" Yeah, I heard of him. They will come to me and go, "Oh, well, I heard you did work for ABC or this person, and I seen their testimonial on your page, or I just heard word of mouth of you." What do you do? And that's where you can show them like your product, your services. Like, let me tell you, I just started really working with the puppets and actually like doing stuff with the puppets like last year. And it's been word of mouth by people that listen to my podcast or even little children. This puppet right here, Orange Digger, he is not for the children. He cusses, he smokes cigarettes, and little children love him. And I said, how? They don't want to be like him, but they love him. And word of mouth is, you need to go to this man that's in a wheelchair that does double dutch or he has puppets. Go to the puppet man. And I was like, the puppet man, who is that? And they say, pull out the orange puppet. This is what exactly he do. Oh, what's up, motherfuckers? Orange digger in the house. I just want to make a shameless plug and go say buy, buy a button for black and gay. I got this button right here. Um, I bought this, not Quincy. Fuck that nigga. I mean, I black and gay. Um, and I see, as you see, I, I bought a button. So buy a button, everybody. Buy a button. Be black and gay. Black and gay. Hey, get down. Okay. And that's and me doing little stuff like that got me more business and more children go. Oh, I want to. I want to learn more about black and gay, or even not even about black and gay. I just want to um, be happy. Just be myself. And if a little spoken puppet can do it, it does happen. So remember that. Testimony is monetization as well. So remember that. Thank you so much for that, Quincy. Thank, Thank you. you. And Orange Digger. Thank you for making an appearance. Um, so the after you, um, you've got your prototype, you kind of know, okay, this is what I'm going to start doing. Um, then you want to start showcasing that using your marketing skills, um, using, you know, your social media, using your, basically, you want to funnel people from your social media 
to your mailing list because this is you also have to think about this your social media instagram owns all of that content they own all of the people there not that own but they own all of that information all of that data so you need to find a way to get that data uh, for yourself and own it uh, and you do that through a mailing list you build a mailing list you build your email list and those are your customers those are your ride or dies those are the people you're sending out your newsletters to or you're sending out updates whatever <clears throat> um and and that then you start to find your um find and test your audience from there um so testing your mvp <laughs> Testing your MVP, you want to validate your MVP by adding it to your website's homepage and ask visitors to register their email, email or mailing list to receive an availability no, notification. Use a Google form and ask those who register to offer feedback. By the end of the test, you should be able to answer the following questions. What am I selling? What is the right price? Who will be immediately compelled to buy? What's my product's primary benefit? What's my product's uh, important secondary benefit? What are the key objections to my offer? <clears throat> like for example, Angel, um, when, what Javon said, like he offered a very, um, you know, uh, objection, a very key objection, you know, like why couldn't I get it from someone else? You know, you have to be able to like answer questions like that, especially like Brent, you know, uh, for your business, you know, you have to be able to answer those questions like why, why should I buy, you know, why should I tap into your networking thing as opposed to any others? Um, and same for Javon, why should I buy your t-shirts as opposed to any of these other t-shirts that are around here? Um, so if someone asks you that question, you have to know why, you know, and counter those objections. Um, why should one, someone buy this now? Um, change to make my offer more compelling. The, all the questions, you'll be asking through your Google Forms in different ways. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a huge Google Form. It doesn't have to be a, you know, massive thing. It's just a way to say, hey, like, you know, you know, what, um, would you buy this at, or uh, for example, if you have, uh, let's take the, the positive affirmation cards, for example, and you ask people like, oh, well, uh, what would be an acceptable price for you to pay for this item? You know, and then you could be like five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, and you see what people put. You know, and see what you know. What's the medium price for that? And you know, you just ask asking relevant questions that um, will help you figure out. Okay, this is what this is how it needs to be done, and this is what people enjoy. Um, so, what are you going to need to start your MVP and uh, and start testing it? First, you're going to need an email address. That's obvious. Every, I think everybody knows that when you're starting a business, you need an email address. If you don't know how to get a free email email address, please let me know, um, or you can search free email address. Um, a website. You also need a website. I'm thinking about everybody knows you need a website in order to have a successful business. There are plenty of free resources for um, free websites. All you literally have to do is type in free website on Google and there will be thousands of results. There's things like Wix, Squarespace, um, all these things that have free um, trials. You can do a 14 day free trial and, you know, cut it off after, after you like kind of notice, okay, it's not really doing that well or whatever. Um, there's so many different ways you can, you know, use a WordPress. WordPress is free um, and you can just have like a, a, a homepage with a simple thing that says, you know, join this mailing list and that's it. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a huge thing um, just to start something. Um, and then you need a social media account. Now, the thing with social media is um, uh, there's a lot of marketing know-how that comes with social media. You have, to, um, you have to know how to compact your content. A lot of things nowadays, they want things that are very quick, very fast. And they want things that are pseudo, like pseudo subjective to your business. So um, let's say like Brent, for example, when I said, um, all you need to do is like post, you know, pictures of models and show videos of people's models, because that's all people want to see. They want to see people modeling and living their life and, you know, living their best life. And all you have to say is, you know, this is what I'm trying to give to you. Um, and people will tap into that. And the same for um, Angel um, with your, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I lose my train of thought, with your self-love classes or with your self-love group, um, 
you, you all you need to do is brand it. Uh, you need to create reels that essentially show people being happy. You know what I mean? And showing people, um, you know, living their best lives and showing people self loving, you know, posting quotes, um, you know, posting like, like we said, posting your story, T tell your story, get in front of the camera and tell your story. Um, that kind of stuff, you know, goes really far. Um, let me think of some other like I'm and these are just real ideas I'm thinking of. Um, you could do a reel that, um, you know, maybe you have like a self help tip or something like that you I'm sure you've seen all the all the time they have these self help tips on you know Instagram. Um, and what you do is you you organize your content in a way that is shareable. You have to you have to create something that no matter who it is, they will share it. It's like something that is so um, so I, I don't want to say bland, but so um, non discriminant that anybody could share it. Um, so like, for example, a, a self help tip, right? So it could be um, it, it could just be a simple quote that you say into the camera and you put it to nice music and you know, you make sure that you have a really clean um, graphic, you know, or you have a really clean uh, uh, quality of video. And, and that's really it. You just post a bunch of those and see, you know, but you don't, obviously you don't want to over flood it, but it is, there's a method, you know what I mean? And you just have to, you have to think like how you think, you know, think about when you're scrolling on Instagram or you're scrolling on social media, what kind of things are you looking at? What kind of things are you sharing, right? And that is what you got to create. Already doing it. <laughs> so you're on the right track. You're absolutely on the right track. You and as as you go, you know what I mean. You'll you'll think more outside of the box. You'll figure things out. You'll you'll see other people and how they do things. Um, that you know, when I started, when I started Black and Gay, I had no clue what I was doing. I just wanted to start an event, and I, I knew that I uh, I wanted to bring people together to do something, and um, people tapped in, and um, I had I had no business sense, you know, um, really, and it, I just I sort of just learned as I grew and learned from people, learned from experiences, but I never stopped. And that's and you're this is where you're at right now. You're at this at this moment of like um, you know, figuring out what the next step is. You know, how can you turn up the notch a little bit, turn up, you know, turn up the heat. Um, and you're you're on the right track. You're on the right track, I promise you. So um, we got another quick little video about how to start marketing your small business, and then we're gonna be done for today. So uh, let's tap in. Listen, it's virtually impossible to run a small business without marketing on social media. But odds are that the social media marketing that you have to do is only a fraction of your task for the day. Tiny little baby fraction. That's why in this video, I'm gonna help you learn the basics of social media marketing that can increase sales in the short and long term. What's up? It's Jamal, welcome back to the channel. Now, to do any job, you gotta have the right tools. That's why I want you to take a moment and find the link in the description to download our free social media templates kit. It's gonna be your wrench for this video, all right? A key tool. In it, you'll find 10 different templates, some of which we're going to go over in this video. So it's worth grabbing now so you can follow along. When it comes to social media marketing, the first thing you want to identify is the goal you hope to achieve. Social media can increase awareness of your product. It can also be used to make sales. It can drive leads to your website, or it can simply help build your brand in the minds of millions of customers. All of these are good things that can lead to more business. But unless you have a whole team of marketers working on your social media, you want to start with just one or two goals. Don't be super ambitious at this stage. You know what I'm saying? A good way to consider which goals to go for is to think about short and long Term results. Short term results are things like direct sales or lead generation that can become sales rather quickly. If your business needs quick injection of cash or you have a special promotion that needs juice right now, revenue direct social media campaigns can be highly effective. But unfortunately, there's 
often a limit to how many leads and sales you can accumulate with a small audience. And even paid campaigns can have their limits before the cost per action becomes too high. That's why it can be better in the long run to focus your social media resources on building brand efforts. These activities are defined by goals like awareness, engagement, and public sentiment that aren't tied to an immediate revenue metric, but will, in time, open your business up to far more sales than would have been possible using short-term social media marketing alone. Once you've determined goals you want to achieve on social media, the next step is to decide which platform to use. To do this, the first thing you want to consider is what social media assets you already have. You could already have followers that you haven't been servicing, but are primed for your message once you start tending to your accounts more closely. Remember the social media templates kit I had you download at the beginning of this video? Now's your chance to use it. Open up the social media audit template and fill out the tabs for any platform you're already actively on. Leveraging the audience you've already established can be more time and cost effective than trying to build an audience from scratch. But if you are building from scratch, the best way to decide which social media platform to focus on is by considering where your audience is most primed to receive your message. The average individual has more than eight social media accounts that they use for different things. So you can't just target a person. You have to target their user persona, which is a combination of demographics like age, gender, and location, as well as a user's profession and activities. A user's demographics stay the same across platforms, but their interests can change depending on what platform they're on. In other words, a 32-year-old woman from San Diego might be an HR specialist on LinkedIn who follows pet groups on Facebook for her dog and watches tennis instruction videos on YouTube to help improve her game. Whether you sell human resources solutions, organic pet food, or tennis racket grip tape will determine the platform you use to target the same 30-year-old woman in San Diego. If you haven't fully analyzed the audience, In the description. Now that you know who your audience is and where to find them, you're ready to start creating content. But what exactly does that look like? Maybe you want to post cool photos of your products to increase awareness or run a survey to enhance engagement. Live videos are great for projecting brand authority. While performance ads like pay per click can drive leads and sales right away, you could even partner with a social media influencer and have them promote your product on their channel. For brands with a solid budget looking for rapid growth, this is a great way to jumpstart a campaign. If you're still not sure which way to go, spend some time doing a competitive analysis of what's working well for others in your space. You probably already have a good idea of what your competition is up to, but it helps to keep a formal inventory. Start by making a list of your three to five closest competitors, then build a spreadsheet to record their number of fans and followers, posting frequency and consistency, content engagement, like are users leaving comments or sharing their posts, content virality, how many shares, repins, and retweets do their posts get? Now you've got your goals, your audience, your platform, and your analysis of what content works. I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, gee, Jamal, can we finally post something? It's been ages. Listen, I wouldn't hit that tweet button just yet, but it is time to start planning your content. And we make that easy to organize with the social media editorial calendar also included in the templates kit. Now the time is to bust it out and start filling in the blanks with all of your brilliant and creative ideas. I say creative because even though you've done a deep dive on the competition, you don't just want to copy what other people are doing. Every brand is different and it's up to you to make that special X factor for your brand shine through because you're a beautiful, unique little snowflake. And I love you so much. All right, anyway, I wish I had time to tell you all of the ways to creatively optimize your content on social media, but there's just too many possibilities for me to cover on this video. Fortunately, we have a whole playlist full of videos that will help you maximize results on whatever platform you've chosen. You can guess where the link is. But since you're still here, I have a few final tips that are almost universal. Keep copy short and sweet and use keywords to help people find your content. It's also been proven that using emojis actually really does work. Make sure that any images you used are sized correctly for the platform and use original images, not stock, if you can avoid it. Videos should have the primary message in the first few seconds to capture the user before they scroll past. And always give your audience some sort of CTA they can follow, unless your goal is strictly engagement, in which case it's better to just ask questions or make statements that people will want to respond to organically. And like everything else in business, be sure to keep careful track of how your social media is performing so you can keep doing what's working.
okay, well, changing up things that aren't. Every social media platform provides analytics. And if you're posting lots of content or posting on multiple platforms, you might want to consider a tool like Hootsuite or Social Sprout or HubSpot's free marketing hub to help you organize and analyze the metrics generated by all of your social media efforts. And when it's time to report your performance, just grab the social media reporting template from the same template kit I've been talking about in this whole video. It truly has everything you need to execute an effective social media marketing strategy. When I tell you that we're literally just giving away the nectar of the gods, straight ambrosia. It's like people are like, no, Jamal, there's no way. Way, way, my friend, we're doing that. You're welcome. Still love you. And while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you never miss a future video about social media marketing. We're constantly making new ones with the latest information on the changing social media landscape, so we'll see you next time. Until then, I'm gonna be looking for your content in my feed. If I don't see it, just let me know where I should be uh, following you. You know what I'm saying? We'll see you next time. All right. So what did y'all think about that? I think uh, social media is like, I mean, it helped, but it also kind of gave me a little anxiety too, because like, it's just me and social media personally, but also not knowing, like when you have to really think about who your audience is, but you have to chase their needs or their wants, that part mm -hmm. I connected with, because it's like, it does feel like an, it can feel like an endless chase on social media to figure out who's looking for what, because you never know, because all these burner accounts. So I thought that part was helpful. Thank you for sharing that. So what um what he was using to do like posts on social media, like the hoop suite and all that, that's what he was like saying to do like, like go out like for the scheduling? No, he was saying use Hootsuite for, um, basically what Hootsuite does is it tracks all of your engagement. So like you're uh, across your different platforms, let's say you got like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, right. LinkedIn, and you wanna check and see what your metrics are and how they're measuring up, you know, between each other. And that's, that's all Hootsuite does. But I think they do help with um, bringing followers as well, but, I don't, I don't, I don't really. I was trying to think, he was like, well, he's like, before you hit that tweet button all that, and he was making his little post. I'm like, where he making his post at? Is it can he make his post, then posting it on like Instagram or that? Because I'm like, I'm confused as, and this is somebody that I do do others on YouTube. I sit there and look at the video and then I go, well, what are you talking about? Are you talking about Canva? Are you talking about, what are you talking about? Like posting the tweet or making it whatever to post it or not. That's why I said, he was like saying, who's tweeting all this? I'm like, well, <clears throat> what do you think that he's making the um, tweet at? So we know what you talking about, talking about follow along with me if you got the, like the um, app or whatever. I'm like, what, you, what, what was the app or what you was talking about? That's why I said thumbs down for it. But like the information you were talking about, like burner accounts and that, it was helpful. But my thing is, what was the app that he was using? And also I put in the chat, um, so this is like what you would say, Mike, like a WordPress account or something like that. You could have a little, I like with my business account, I got a little thing that just show you, hey, and different partners to everybody that's down there. It's something like what I do, whatever. And this, what my direct me don't collect emails, but with this um, drum IO, it collects emails and you can do a lot more stuff with it. I'm still playing around with it, but it does help me with a lot more um, collecting people's emails and sending newsletters out and doing different things. I put in the chat as well, but thank you to let me talk y'all. Thank you, Quincy. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, yeah, anybody else? What was I think of the video? Um, like I said, I'm noticing the videos that you've been showing. It, it, it like I said, is reinforcing what I've been told before. Because like I'm also a part of, you know, other different social media marketing groups and stuff, and. My issue is, is that I don't like social media. Mm. I have to force myself to be on social media because I just, I don't like it. 
call me old school, but I don't care for it at all. If I didn't have to do stuff for work, I wouldn't be on it. So um, in that, you know, in that instance, this is why, you know, your, your event being local, this is why it's so important for you to tap in locally, you know, and tap into some of those people um, who are in your community, because those are going to be your bread and butter. Um, and those are going to, those are going to be faster than the internet people. Um, there are a lot of, lot of businesses that, um, didn't start from social media, you know what I mean? Or don't have like huge social media followings or, you know, um, even some celebrities, you know what I mean? They do work and they, they're not really on social media that much. So, you know, they just kind of, um, yeah. I mean, I've even seen some of like the uh, girls from uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, um, Akiria, Akiria, uh, let me stop. Let me stop saying her name before this video get out there. But Akiria, Akiria I got you. Akiria, she be up here for like zero comments. She don't get no comments. She don't get nothing. I be mean, like, damn, like, isn't she like a famous? But anyways, so it's it's not really you know about any of that. You know, you can build th those people without social media as well. But it's the point. Somebody told me this. Um, in order to build a successful business, you need to get your business into the into the uh, face of a hundred new people per day. A hundred new people every day need to be hearing about your business. That's a lot of people, and that's whether that's Instagram, uh, walking up, you know, uh, anything. That's you know, and I mean, obviously, that's a really really high goal to reach. You know, but the more, you know, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, for example, something that we do uh, for uh, Black and Gay, um, we message people, we message people, DM them, like literally, oh, you followed? Thank you so much for following. Like, let me, let me, t let me get you tapped in because this is what you follow now. You know what I mean? And this is how we, you know, we gain, we build our clientele, we build our community. We, we reach out to people um, and that's where, that's where it comes from. Um, and there is like a personalized touch and yeah, it takes time. Yes, it's a time commitment, you know, going through all those comments, going through all the follows, you know, sending messages to all the people and replying to all those messages and replying to those messages. That, it's, it's almost never ending, but I'm telling you, when you start to roll, like the business, like it's like sparks. So, yeah. Um, any other things? Um, just, I'm just going to say kind of what um, I worked through, just like with social media saying you hate social media. Because like, I feel like I can come across as I'm a social media girl, but I, 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 I'm not. Okay. So it can, but it's, it's, it's like I am and I'm not because I get anxious. So for me and how I process the whole, like how Mike just said, like messaging people, cause I'm getting out there trying to do more DMing and stuff like that for us and for black and gay. So, cause the way I get around the whole anxiety of like feeling like it's never ending is saying like today, I just gotta have this one conversation, this one interaction. And if I can keep going, it'll snowball. Exactly. And then even if it's hella people messaging me all at once, I'm one person and I can only talk to one of them. But the goal is just to get one of them. So don't psych yourself out before you start. Just kind of do it and stop saying that you're, and that's something I'm working on too, stop saying that you're not a social media person because it's just a tool. Right. Thank you so much for that, Brent. I, I absolutely agree. Um, I think what people forget, um, we're on social media, we're thrown like so many different things, but you can literally curate your feed. Like if you look at um, like black and gay feed, there is literally nothing but black and gay people on my feed. Every time I open my feed, it's a black and it's a queer person, period. Like no matter, and I curated it specifically that way. Like people that I don't, I for sure don't want to, 
you know, see or whatever. Like I make sure I don't look at their stuff or whatever, unfollow or, or um, you know, block or whatever you got to do. You know what I mean? Like you, you can literally curate your spaces to be the way that you want it to see. You know, you don't have to look at uh, information that is triggering to you if you don't want to. You can totally, you know, um, report, you know, not report, but stop. Um, there's a button that you can press to like stop seeing stuff like this or whatever, you know, um, if, if that's something like, you know, and like, especially what Britt said as well, um, the anxiety when it comes to like DMing people and trying to do that. Um, a very simple method for doing that is go to um, go to a competitor, right? Go to their page and go to a post that they have and see who's following so, or see who commented. Go to their page and just follow that person. And you can keep going down the list and just follow, and just follow, 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 follow. Like a few pictures even. This is what I do for Black and Gay. I will go into the page, I'll like six pictures, and then I follow. And then if they follow me back, I send them a message. And that's how it works. It's like, it's, you know, and you don't have to, um, it's not something that we do every day. It's not something that we do constantly. You know, we tap into it when we need to, when we feel like we need to, you know, it really increase the member base and we really need to, we, me and him will, will get on it, the both of us and we'll, you know, uh, we'll crunch it out. Um, but it, it is something that you have to do when you feel like it, you know, um, and it doesn't really, uh, I don't think it really takes that much time. It's, there's a, there's a lot of different ways you can automate certain things like sending those messages. Um, do you know, Instagram has like a saved replies thing. So you can put in there, you know, your, your message, like, you know, if someone follows you, for example, um, we have a thing, like a, literally a script and it says, um, Hey, you know, thanks for following. How are you doing? And that starts the conversation because now, you know, they're, they're inquired to respond. So now we've, you know, we're starting a conversation. That's the first message. Um, and we have it set on a, on a saved reply thing. So it's like set up by numbers. Um, if you want me to show it to you, I can. But um, so, and then the next message is like, uh, cause you know, they're gonna reply with something like, oh, I'm doing great, how are you? And then I reply with, oh, I'm doing great too. My name is Michael, thanks so much. You know, um, I'm the founder of Black and Gay, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then they respond with something else. Oh, I love what you're doing. I love, you know, blah, blah, blah. I love, you know, your page. Thanks so much for following me back. And I'll be like, yeah, you know, um, I'm just trying to connect with people because this is what I'm doing. Uh, please, you know, go and visit my page or please, you know, check this out, blah, blah, blah. And bam, like you've gotten someone who's following or who's at least checked out your website, you know, or at least had some interaction with you. And even if that's just five people in a day or one person in a day, like Brent said, that's totally fine. You're building something, you know, one person at a time, one person at a time. So we, we cool? Anybody got anything? I'm sorry, I talked a lot. I'm so sorry, but I'm really passionate about this. No. Oh, I thought I was in the questions one, but then again, oh, go ahead, Brett, you go first. You know, they say, young is for the age. Girl, you is not old. <laughs> I'm going on you. I'm going on me. Well, you is not. Uh, but no, nah, let me put off the street. You know, I love you. Um, shit. Where was it? Because I wrote it down. Okay, so for, okay, just quick question. Now, it ain't the, I, it, I'll just say it. So for me, so what my goal is to do with the, um, so it's, I'm, it's been named, it's literally existed since the day I like, I left school and I couldn't model with my modeling to work anymore. I was like, well, fuck you bitches, I'm not gonna stop. So, but anyways, so Shatterproof Modeling is the name. Um, and so, but my goal is to connect, like, so I wanna connect makeup artists, nail techs, hairstylists, photographers, models, businesses that need marketing, or that need, you know, need those services for their campaigns and then graphic designers, um, some marketing managers possibly and video videographers. And so for me, 
the email list like that works and I think that'll be a good jumping point but I'm still trying to mm, I guess I'm trying to figure out what I because I don't feel I feel like what am I selling because I'm not initially selling something I need to I have to I'm I need the the laborers first and so you're muted. Okay, so um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so what you're selling is the idea. So what you have to come up with, okay, so um, first you need to do your research. Look into other marketing firms. Look into uh, places who are kind of doing the work that you want to be doing. <clears throat> and start there start seeing like you know how um how they function you know what um what kinds of products that they're offering how how they sort of you know how the services are running um then you can sort of see like okay so how can i do this differently or how can i do this in a way that if this person um who is currently using this will make will want to jump ship and come to me and so, so you start taking you start taking what you already see is happening, and you de deconstruct it into a way that it works better for those people. That and then that's what you sell, right? You sell this idea of like, hey, you know, I'm creating this thing that is actually going to be different from the things that you know that you're used to. Okay. Yeah, because so for me, with that, that would be the whole it being satellite. Cause my whole goal is to be like, you know, like I'm in a small ass town. I need models. I want to make commercial. I don't want to use stock images. I don't want to use da da da. And I could literally be like, I have a team in your region. Boom, let's set it up. Mm -hmm. And then vice versa, like, or I'm a model. I just moved to Texas or I moved to Hell, Illinois, but I'm not in Chicago where it's big. You know what I'm saying? There's pocket cities where there's activity, but I don't have any access. And it's like, boom, I can put you to work. So I guess that'll be my thing. And also, I just Googled. Okay. There's a piece out there with my name. So I had to figure some shit out. And so, they're a market agency. So, I, you know, another interesting thing could be something like... Uh, Kind of like an Uber for models. You yeah, because like honestly, it's more, it's less marketing agency and more a modeling agency. Right. So basically, people like if I if I needed somebody to um, take a picture in a in a shirt or whatever um, mm -hmm. media, I would send this person the shirt. They would take it, take the picture, and send the shirt back. Mm hmm. So it'll be like, it'll be a whole process because it'll kind of be like, you want the shirt to be photographed. So then I immediately, I get a photographer in the area because I'll have the different pocket regions. The photographer will set it up to shoot with the model and that way it can all just kind of happen. Simultaneously, I call the makeup artists, all of that. They meet within a certain range. I kind of want them to be a certain radius from each other and then everyone within that can come together and then the whole thing is done right there yeah I mean, yeah i mean what you're what you're talking about is essentially um marketing business yeah. that's, that's exactly what they do um and i think doing it, doing it satellite is something that is a sellable thing the only thing that i think you'll run into issues with is um you know the you, you would be the bridge between the the business in the model and you would have to make sure that all of those interactions would be very very well handled and very very secure you know as far as like sending merchandise and you know what i mean that kind of stuff and making sure the merchandise goes back and you know that kind of stuff but i think that's a very very profitable thing and i think it's something um maybe in the pandemic you know era it probably would have popped off a lot harder People were stuck in their homes and probably could have used that kind of service. Um, but even now, you know, um, I think you would find 
more of a market for um, people who are stuck in their homes, specifically for like disabled people. You know, there's so many ways that, you know, you could use that, you know what I mean, um, to market to people who, you know, who really need, you know what I mean? Who, who yeah. Does that make sense? And now, you're, and now you're solving a, a problem, right? Okay. And so, right. and so now, let's say you're, um, and just snowballing off of that, you, you're solving this problem. Let's say of uh, people who need the modeling work, you know, um, and you're solving the problem of these businesses who need the inclusion, who need the you know, uh, the different, you know, able bodies, the different sized bodies and, you know, um, all the, the new faces, you know, because marketing companies are looking for new faces, you know, they don't want the same sort of, you know, if, if you look at media nowadays, people are looking for different, you know, we're not looking, we're not, um, the same models aren't the same anymore, you know, they're, not. they're, they're changing. And that's my thing. I want to be able to take I, my thing is, I want to be able to take Billy Joe off the street that has an inkling to model and turn them into something profitable and then send them out. Because I, my thing is, I looked at my, look, I look at my own frustration of feeling like I need to be in these certain cities in order to thrive. And so I want to break that barrier of location. And that's where I come through with that. So. That's what I'm. That's what I want to break the whole. I gotta move to Atlanta to pop. I gotta move to Hollywood to to pop. I want to destroy that and make it to where anybody can jump in. And so yeah, but yeah, thanks. Yeah, I yeah yeah. I'll take some good notes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just remember, you know, like with marketing, there's already like so many different websites you know where people models can go to put their picture on there and try to find work i mean mm -hmm. there are thousands of websites so you have to be something that is offering something different or for different like space you know you have to have like a niche audience or you know something that you're offering you know uh, that is substantial you know but you can out. Yeah, we will. Anybody else got anything before we close out? So I'm gonna tell y'all for all those who are new entrepreneurs and new things, listen, remember these three things I learned, and I'm still learning through this. That remember that a stranger will buy from you before somebody else in your family buy from you. So keep marketing to strangers. The second thing is gorilla market. Make sure that you put your name out in the streets. You say, hey, hey, everybody, I'm doing this. Do little beta test programs where you can monetize off of testimonials where people will come back to you. Make sure you post or make sure you guerrilla market. And then also that, 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 that. And also this believe in, I call it the planting, the planting and gathering season. You plant as many things as possible and throw them eggs out there. And then when the eggs start to hatch, you start to gather them eggs and start to reinvest in your business. Um, like I say, I am, uh, I'm the best example of it, especially when I got shot. I came from making at least in a month time, $5,000 in a month maybe a little more because I had extra hustles. Then when I got shot, after I got shot, I became where my income was only $1,700 a month. Well, I ain't gonna say it was $1,700. When I first got shot and they told me, they told me I had to make off of $1,500 a month. And also, well, no, it was 17 because I still get the little $200 um, a month check for my company for my disability. You telling me $1,900 to still do rent rent i still had to pay for i had to pay out of pocket for medical coverage i still had to pay somebody to help me well you know extra services uh, a to come still help me because i cannot wash my model of my body and transfer on top of that i still have my animals my ferrets and their food automatically now it went up to 20 dollars now 22 dollars i had all this and you told me i couldn't do it for nothing so with these three things 
I just started hustling and with my hustling between doing podcasting, doing like different little things, it started to, I was putting my seeds in, putting my little chickens in, and I started to gather and start putting more into the business. So remember those three things and those three things help. I am a product of having zero money to now having, I mean, it's social security, all that down. But if I could tell you now, my, I make close to what I'm making now, at least I make at least $300, $3,000 a month. And that's off of many of things that I do. Like I said, I do many of things to do that, but this is off of having nothing. I got gear now that I don't even use. Some of I use, some of I don't use that cost that, but that's just helping my business. And that's just me just going out there, guerrilla marketing, saying, hey, how you doing? Just like, um, that was laughing with the puppets and all that. I know that me doing adult things, the puppets was a new thing that it's a need that, People need more laughter. People need more empathy. I started hitting the market hard. I didn't say what, and that's the one thing too. I say what people need. You need to see what you can fit in and what the void is of the need because it might be somebody that just like, for example, uh, both Mike and Adrian both do art. Their art is different, but at the same time, their their void is their their needs are both different from what they're doing. It was always the same with me um, from a state lady and a long time ago. You all we all can sit at the table and eat. It is how I finesse my plate for the left and right that you're not so much at your plate uh, at the table. I'll make sure that all of us will come on up, but me sitting at the table and how I finesse my plate at the end, at the right, at the left. Is not how useful that's your path that. So just remember about that. And thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. All right. Um, if that is all the comments for tonight, um, we are going to do positive affirmations. Um, so I know this is your first one coming in. Um, oh, wait, they left. Never mind. So positive affirmations. Mine would be, oh my God, I didn't mute. Mine is going to be, I am worth taking that risk. Mm. Well, mine for today is going to be, uh, failure is not an option. Mine is going to be, note to self, I'm going to make you so proud. Gary, Star, Javon, y'all there? Eyes here. Let me go through my damn list. Hold on. <laughs> y'all been so quiet today. Yeah. I know, right? So I got a positive affirmation, y'all. I'm a bag of trips and I'm an emotional puppy. But I just want to tell everybody to make sure y'all shop at Black and Gay. Look, I got a button like Orange Digger did. <laughs> Same as plus, shop at Black and Gay, YouTube. And also, there's puppies. We're here. Orange, hey, I'm just trying to get my word out. Look, get a button, get a button, get a button, get a button, get a button at Black and Gay. And my positive affirmation is this a member. With all your emotions, it could be an abundant thing to help others. Be a rainbow in somebody's life. Just be a ripple tide. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Why is the why is the thing still talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy, you is a fool. Okay, what we got? First off, I want to say thank you so much. That, this was a lot of information. I'm not necessarily looking to start a business, so it was just a lot. It's just here to just listen, take it in. And um, <clears throat> my positive affirmation for 
today will be if you have the product, they will come. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yes. Well, think about I'm uh, hold on. Go ahead. Say what you gotta say. Oh no, Javon's I bet you is it's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you are not. By Basquiat, I think that's an affirmation. I don't know. It's a quote by somebody. Okay. It's not who you that? are. You don't see his thing? It's his picture right there. It says, it's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. Oh, okay. That's been there the whole time. <laughs> oh, well, that's hey, hey, hey. He affirmed the time. Okay, he's been affirmed since the whole time. <laughs> I read it earlier. Look, man, I'm too high for this shit. Shut up. Listen, I'm fasting right now. So the way I'm tired. I don't give a damn so about different. you being fast. You just said you was getting engaged. How you gonna be fast when you getting engaged? Bitch, I'm divorced. What you not he gonna do? Now you divorced. Now you divorced. He fast oh, before that. We... You know what? Really the, uh, the point was, I'm sleepy. Okay. Anyways, here's mine. I'm unsubscribing from people in their toxic bullshit and subscribing to, to positive. Okay? How about that? <laughs> and I'm going to unsubscribe to your bullshit. You just pulled <laughs> over there in the kitchen. <laughs> no, no, it's I he fasted. Right. So look, I want to show y'all before we go. Show down. We got these. Oh. Um, we got the hoodies in. If y'all can see, they say, um, "I'm proud to be black." Yeah, I like being black. It's Come fun. It's cute. They're cute. I love it. Yeah. Like, like, I had changed like, my mind. Buy a button. Buy a button. This is oh. cute. Look at the button. The cute button. I'm getting the blue one that. instead. And we got our tag on them. A logo. A logo. Look, the tag. Buy a button, y'all. Buy a button. I got. Oh, hold on. What is the other button go? Yeah, this is exciting. This is a good one. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna get the periwinkle blue one. I mean, it's not technically periwinkle. It's not the periwinkle. <laughs> and also, we got air pressure too. Our black and gay. Chrissy, I, nah, we talk. Right. Okay, y'all. Hold on, I don't remember us ever talking. How are you joking? Okay, that was unnecessary. Thank you so much, baby. Look, air pressure go a long way. You can do a lot of stuff with it. This uh, apparently, she. Would you be stiffing? Bitch, at least let us know so we could do some homeopathic shit. We could do. Y'all thought you were sitting over there smoking a deal just now. What are you saying? Uh, yeah, okay, so he was talking about earlier, we were talking about how we get over sickness. And he was talking about his mama used to heat up. Dicks. Oh, no, I heard that. No, I wouldn't have missing his that. His mom used to heat up dicks and make him drink it. <laughs> that sounds like torture. Just one, t- just one tablespoon. <laughs> or maybe two. Two tablespoons. Yeah, it's a medicine. I remember that. I remember that. It's like castor oil. It's like castor oil. What? Yeah, that's yeah, old that's yeah, that's yeah, like he, yo, mom, away from me right now. That's how mom, no, my great grandma, my great grandma, she used to put a that. penny around me with I just with see a seven year old cry. Because they got to finish. Bye bye. 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 Peace up all the best limbs. Do y'all's homework on Wednesday. Please. Okay. okay. What homework? What's the homework? Because a person like you don't know the homework. The, for the song. I'm gonna post I'm gonna post the homework in the art lines, Quincy. Listen, I wanna go so bad. I was just saying for somebody else that don't uh, know the homework. I'm just, you know, oh. for all those that don't know the homework. Okay. You could add me. Hashtag asking for somebody else. Right. Yeah, you know, I <laughs> check my <laughs> yeah. okay, y'all. Good night. I love y'all so much. I hope you have a good night. We night. love you. Good night.